Okay, welcome to our channel. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue. We're going to talk about Enneagram Type 8s today, and we're going to look at some of the superpowers of Type 8s, or some of the strengths, you might say, of Type 8s. Um, so we're going to make it all positive uh, all day for Type 8s. Okay, and so we want to talk about, um, you know, how you show up in life and how you make a difference in the world and how you empower others. And we want to shine a spotlight on all of the good in Type 8s today. Uh, as a reminder, in the description below is a link to my website, TomLahue.com, where you can book Enneagram coaching appointments or relationship coaching. And also, I have a lot of classes uh, that I have available, on-demand courses, and sometimes live on Zoom. I'd love for you to participate in one of those classes on the Enneagram and other things related to self-help. Uh, always growing, and uh, check out my new books on my website as well. And uh, invite me to come speak to your team. I'd love to come meet your people and encourage them and challenge them in any way I can. So all that you can find on my website, TomLahue.com. Look forward to hearing from you. All right, so let's talk about type eights. And let's go down a list here of some of the strengths or superpowers of type eights. And we want to start with number one, decisiveness. Decisiveness. Type eights, and I'm just looking at my notes, type eights are often quick to make decisions and take action, which can make them a valuable asset both in personal and professional situations. Yeah, I think it goes back to the idea that eights don't want to like be indecisive because indecisive feels like a helpless child, you know, waiting for mommy to tell me what if it's okay, is it okay to make a grilled cheese sandwich? I can't do that. I just got to go ahead and make the sandwich. And if somebody has a problem with it, what was I supposed to do? I mean, I got to, I got to eat. And so that, that ability to like just move into action and be decisive can be such a helpful thing thing when everybody's stuck in committee and we're all waiting for the for the uh, uh, you know the surveys to come back in we don't know what we should do it can, it can be great to have somebody who's a who's naturally willing to take a step forward and in that way kind of lead other people sometimes eights I don't think really want to be leaders I don't know that they want always that kind of responsibility but you'll often be seen as a leader simply for the fact that you're willing to step out and be decisive make a decision oh my goodness somebody please make a decision let's go forward let's start moving forward and we'll figure things out as we go so decisiveness number Number two is confidence. Confidence. You know, you can you can attract a lot of people around you when you're confident. When you uh, when you have a strong sense of self assurance, not easily swayed by other people and uh, and their agendas or their opinions. And this makes you often a leader in in groups because of this willingness to just. Move forward with what makes sense to you. Move forward with what you feel is right in your heart. That high locus of control that, well, somebody's got to do something. This is ridiculous. This needs to be dealt with. And so that willingness to just move forward, confident in yourself, confident that you'll be able to land on your feet, confident that what you're about to do makes sense to you. And so since it makes sense to you, then you're going to go ahead and move forward with it. And when we are sort of vacillating, indecisive, apprehensive, anxious, when you are willing to just go forward, believe in yourself, have confidence, it makes us want to follow you. All right, type number three, protectiveness. Protectiveness. And I think about eights like in the way they think about love. I think protectiveness is probably a big part of what it means to love someone. If you love people, you're going to protect them. If you love your kids, you're going to protect them. So protectiveness, eights can be fiercely protective, uh, especially of those that they care about and not afraid to stand up in times of need, not afraid to make their voice known. Now, that doesn't mean eights are always going to speak up. Sometimes they might just think this isn't worth my time or I want to be connected to the group and so I'm going to be careful what I say because if I, if I open up and start speaking, well then, you know, maybe, maybe I'll go too far. But um, by and large, I think this is a great attribute of type eights to be protective, to, um, to make sure that they're watching out for somebody else and making sure that these people are around them are safe and secure and protected. Number four, resilience. Resilience. Um, I'm just finishing up a class on the topic of resilience, which is all about getting back up. When you get knocked down, when you feel defeated, when you feel overwhelmed, getting back up, dusting it off, rub some dirt on it, and keep moving forward. Resilience to have a high tolerance for adversity and the ability to bounce back from setbacks or challenges using your experience to become even stronger. And that is so important because 
The reality is, is life is going to be challenging. There's going to be a lot of uh, heartaches and setbacks and, and difficulties that come our way. And it's just part of that type 8 nature to shake it off and don't let it get you down. Keep moving forward. And if this didn't work, we'll then start doing something else. And what a wonderful characteristic. You can see why type, type 8s often end up in leadership positions with decisiveness, confidence, protectiveness, resilience, the ability to just try again and not let it overwhelm you, not let the opinions of everybody else overwhelm you or, or sidetrack you. And number five, assertiveness. Assertiveness. Assertiveness, type 8's ability to express their needs and boundaries clearly can lead to more effective communication and better and healthier relationships. So assertiveness. Now, obviously there is, you can push this too far and assertiveness can become aggressiveness where you're just kind of like plowing over people and stomping over people. But assertiveness is the positive side of that, of just owning your space and owning your voice and being willing to speak up for your own needs and being willing to say out loud what you think and how you feel and what you think ought to be done. And that can be so helpful when the room is silent and everybody's walking on pins and needles, um, just to have that one voice that says, well, I think we ought to do this. Well, I think we ought to take action here. I want to encourage you as an eight, don't be that person that sits back and doesn't say anything. And then when somebody says, well, what do you think? And then you say, well, you don't even want to hear what I have to say. Just just don't do that. Just go ahead and enter into the group, share your thoughts, share your opinions, share what you think, take that role of, of being assertive, willingly step into that space, and then you'll help all the compliant and withdrawn types be able to get in that mix and be able to get their opinions out as well. Uh, number six, self-reliance. Number six, self-reliance often independent and resourceful, valuing your ability to handle situations on your own. Like, I would love to have other people help me, but at the end of the day, I can do this on myself, uh, on my own. I can, I can manage, I'm gonna be okay, I'm independent, I'm strong, I'm gonna be able and capable, and able to land on my feet. What a wonderful strength to be self-reliant. Of course, you don't wanna cut yourself off from other people, you wanna be able to relate and engage with other people, but just that confidence of being self-reliant, um, not necessarily necessarily having to depend on everybody else uh, to be able to make your way. You can just see, I mean, what a list. Decisive, confident, protective, resilient, assertive, self-reliant. And number seven, motivation. Number seven, motivation. Type eights are driven to succeed and accomplish their goals, often pushing themselves and others to reach their full potential. So I mean, I just hear Dr. Phil in my head saying, you need to take responsibility for yourself. You know, shake it off, take responsibility for yourself, look to your own path, start moving forward. What can you do right now? Quit talking about it, quit quit looking for everybody else's opinion, their approval. Just take leadership, take responsibility, be confident, be bold, start moving forward. Wow, I have an eight wing, I'm a seven wing six, but when I start talking like this, I start to feel that eight stuff. It feels good, it feels powerful. So motivation, you know, and think about this. These are all the things you give away to other people, eights. This is the way you show up and you encourage us when we don't know what to do, when we need some help, when we're feeling stuck. I mean, eights are just great people to tap on the shoulders when you need a good kick in the rear end and just to challenge you, to motivate you, to help you believe in yourself and empower you. And, and maybe to even speak the truth to you, say, you know what, you need to quit feeling sorry for yourself. You quit feeling sorry for yourself. You need to, you need to, you know, Get up, put your pants on, you know, brush your teeth, put your belt on, and get out there and make something happen. I'm challenging myself here. Okay, all right, um, number eight, strategic thinking. Strategic thinking. They excel at problem solving and can develop effective strategies for achieving their objectives. Just like, boom, we need to do something. Let's do this, then do that, and then do this. And so that ability to just like start moving and start solving the problem while you're moving. I mean, just realize, guys, that's not the way everybody operates. I mean, a lot of people, they like go, okay, well, we got a problem. All right, so let's get our pads of paper out and let's start working some scenarios. And what do you think, Carl? And what do you think, Sam? And what do you think, Frank? Well, let's start doing some surveys and doing some research. Let's start. Okay, just realize a lot of us are like that. Like we, we take the problem and we may never even get to action on the problem because we're so busy like, what is it, collaborating and I want to say debilitating, but that's not the right word, uh, collaborating and, you know, uh, all the other stuff, you know, of just trying to uh, and it becomes like this big deal to like work on a problem, but we never take action. And you guys realize like you got to take action. You got to start moving. You got to start. You got to start pushing some stuff around and move things around. 
And your ability to just do that and to just be confident in yourself, it's inspiring. It's inspiring to the rest of us. Like, well, I don't know. I mean, Sam's moving, so let's start following Sam. And that's what people do is they just kind of line up behind you, whether you realize it or not, with this incredible you know, ability to lead other people. So slow down and, and let the people follow you. Slow down, maybe you need to hear that. Slow down, realize that the rest of us wanna keep up with you, we wanna follow you, um, we wanna work with you. And sometimes aids you can kind of work against people, um, but you know, just slow down and take some time and let the rest of us kind of you know, clue us in what we're doing here and be patient with us when we start asking questions. All right, so strategic thinking. Number nine, empowerment. And this one's huge. This one, in my opinion, is one of the biggest you know, characteristics of AIDS. Type AIDS have a knack for empowering others to take charge of their lives and to advocate for themselves. Wow, what a helpful, powerful thing this is. And I don't think that like, you know, maybe, maybe you think of it a little differently. My guess is AIDS probably think of it like, I'm not really empowering you, you have power, you just don't live in it. You just don't recognize it, you just don't accept it. And that's the truth, guys, is a lot of us, we don't. We don't realize like we have the authority and the power to own our lives. It's like, well, I gotta keep Myrtle happy, I gotta keep Gladys happy, and I gotta keep Mama happy, and I don't wanna upset the apple cart, and I don't wanna live with problems, and I don't want people to be angry at me. And, and just to hear that eight voice like, wake up, man, this is your life. Is this what you want to be doing? You don't have to do this. I think about the old guy in the Christmas story. He was an eight, you know, the dad, uh, the old man. And, you know, when I see uh, uh, Ralphie coming down the steps and he's got on that stupid bunny costume, Ralphie's probably a nine. Um, and his dad looks at him and is like, do you want to wear that? Are you happy like that? Do you feel comfortable? Let him take it off. Take it off. You don't have to wear that. Take it off. That sense of just like, you don't have to do this. Why are you feeling so stuck in life? Man, shake it off. If you don't like where your life is, turn around, get up and do something different. Don't sit there and cry and moan about it I'm in my eight wing can you see that I'm just I just get in that eight wing and I need to hear that voice more and maybe you do too I mean maybe you're not an eight maybe you're watching this video and you need you know that kind of like challenge and encouragement I always say if you want to be understood and you want to you want somebody to create space for you go to a nine but if you want somebody to kick your rear in and help you achieve your goals go to an eight you know, if you want to quit talking about making changes and you want somebody to really just push and, and, and put that gauntlet down on you, go to an eight. If you don't want somebody to give you an inch, you know, and you want somebody to, to give you some, restore some ownership to your life, go to an eight. Okay, number 10, last one, honest communication. They are known for being direct and honest, which can lead to more authentic connections with others. Honest communication. And I think like eights tend to think if we could just all be honest, we could solve problems, but we can't be honest because people get their feelings hurt. We need to just be able to speak the truth and deal with problems, put them on the table, put them all on the table, and let's deal with it. So let's go through this list again. Decisive, confident, protective, resilient, assertive, self-reliant, motivated, strategic thinkers, empowerment, and honest communication. What a fantastic list of superpowers that you take into the world. Now, I'm working on creating a course for every type, a 10-day challenge for every type, and we're going to go through all the strengths and all the weaknesses, all the challenges, and how to open yourself up for better relationships and leverage these strengths in your life to become you know, all that you were designed and created to be. So I'm excited about putting this class together. Like I said, I'm, trying, I'm going to work on developing one course for every type, a 10-day challenge that says, here's what you're good at, here's where there's maybe some rough spots, here's where there's some blind spots, and let's not let these blind spots hold us back. Let's become everything we're designed to be open ourselves up to the relationships around us and be all that all that we can be so eights i appreciate you guys thank you for being who you are and if you're starting to beat yourself up and feeling kind of in that five place let me just remind you come back to your eight space come on shake it off come back to your eight space we need you there we need you to empower us we need you to speak the truth to us we need you to to encourage us all right as always i'll see you guys next time be present to life